Howdy friends. So here's um, one of the banjo tunes that most banjo players learn in the first couple banjo lessons. Uh, it's Cripple Creek and there's a couple phrases uh, and this is just a video to help you on your timing of those phrases. So here's the first phrase. We start with the middle finger slide. It goes one, two, three, inch, slide, two, three. things. There's some quarter notes in there, so we go one, two, three is our count off. It starts on beat four, four, slide on beat one. Now we're not actually striking a note on beat one, so that's a little bit weird. One, two, three, pinch, slide, and then we go fifth string, first string, second string. Those are our quarter notes. Quarter notes should be easy, but for most people, um, most beginners especially, those quarter notes are a little bit elusive in the timing of them because we're not rolling. So we go one, Two, three, inch, slide, two, three, four, one. Now that little two-fingered C there, make sure you're using your index finger and your ring finger. Thumb index middle, we call that a forward roll. So forward roll, thumb index middle, thumb, open first string, and a pinch. Here's that whole phrase again, and I'll give you a chance to play it after. One, two, three, inch, slide, Count you in one, two, three, pinch, slide, two, three, four, forward roll, one, and two. So make sure your timing is, is nice and even. Make sure that you're not rushing the slide on that and make sure that you're counting all of those quarter notes as full beats. Um, the next phrase in the worksheet that we have for Cripple Creek, uh, there's a phrase that starts with a slide. In this case a two three slide we call that a square roll we'll do that a bunch more times in the song as well so make sure you can play those that little combination of notes thumb slide index thumb middle inner and outer slide to pinch Okay, so here's the here's what we're unpacking there. Slide. This is an A note. And we play the open D string, the first string. And then we play the low D string, second fret. That's an E note. So I refer to these notes as A and E. Sometimes you can get them with two fingers side by side like this. And do it in the same motion, and that helps some people. Other times people will just use their middle finger and relocate it. But uh, the important thing is that you know how to play an A note and you know how to play an E note. Then after that we're going to hammer on and a pinch. So that whole phrase together, get really good at this one. A and E. Hammer on the E string or on the E note. Do that one more time and then you get a get a chance at it. Uh, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Your turn three and four and slide. A E hammer on. That's about 66% of the song. The last little phrase that you need is the three Cripple Creek slides and then what I call inners and outers. Inners and outers meaning the inner string and then the outer strings. So here's our three Cripple Creek slides. This should be the fun, easy part. There's one, here's two. Oops. Here's three. And then inners and outers. That's followed by our ending phrase, which is the Cripple Creek slide, A, E, hammer on, there's the powers. Okay, uh, let's try this from the top and we'll put this together. I'll talk you through it. I'll talk you through how I kind of have it uh, internalized in my brain. And I hope that helps you because the goal is to get this memorized so that you don't need to read it. 
Uh, if you do need to read it, that's okay in the beginning stages, but you want to get this memorized um, and, and keep it memorized, I guess, is a, is a hard part for a lot of people. So here we go. Here's the first part. Uh, pinch slide, some quarter notes, two-fingered C. Our ending phrase goes slide, A, E, hammer, low. Do that two times, and then we've got slides. Okay, so I'll count to three, and then we play pinch slide for a pickup. One, two, three. Pinch, slide, two. Rolling two-fingered C. So that's the whole thing. Now get good at playing this multiple times in a row. After you finish it once, you go back to the beginning and play it again. And then also get good at playing through the chords and, and um, rolling through some patterns on the chords is, is more of a backup pattern, not so much as a melody, um, a melody statement. So uh, problem spots my banjo students have had is that slide, getting confident on the timing of it, two-fingered C, Make sure you're playing two-fingered C with the index finger and the ring finger. That's our go-to fingering for this shape. Uh, not with the, the, two, the two peace sign fingers. It's just not a good habit to get into and it sort of pushes these fingers out of, uh, out of the good notes that you want to get. Uh, don't rush these slides. Keep them, you know, exactly half of the roll notes is, is the goal. Sometimes people will do that. I've had a lot of success doing this with two fingers. Some people will uh, do it like that. But at a fast tempo, I think getting it with two fingers is a little bit easier for me. Uh, with the hammer on, don't rush that hammer on. You know, practice like a hundred of these or a thousand of them in a row. Try to be really in control over it so it doesn't come out sounding like this. Too fast, right? Um, we play that phrase again, and we've got a little bit of a pickup. Our pinch starts again on beat four, and we slide into beat one. Two finger C. This is always going to happen in the same order. Slide. A and E. Hammer onto the E note for the open D string. Three slides are pretty easy. Uh, I've seen this written a couple different ways. One is to go open G string in a pinch, or other times people play the open D string instead. I don't really care which one you play, um, as long as you do it with conviction. So. Uh, that's Cripple Creek. I'll do the whole thing through uh, two times uh, just to give you some more practice on it and you can play it with me. Um, I'll talk you through the first way and then hopefully the second way you can talk yourself through it. One, two, three.
you uh, practicing Cripple Creek in time with good phrases and, and, and steady rhythm. A um, uh, couple disclaimers, you will probably play this on a jam session or with other people faster than I just played it. Uh. should also get this memorized so that you can start um, working in other licks into it. Um, some of the, every, you know, usually every song that you have an ending two measures with <laughs> makes a great ending lick or a phrase to insert into Cripple Creek. So um, use this as sort of a workshop for other things as well as just the, the, the phrases that you've learned in Cripple Creek. Um, and also if you do play this with mandolin players, fiddle players, um, sometimes with guitar players, they're going to want to capo this, and they're going to want to put a capo on the second fret, and you'll need to do something to your fifth string, uh, get a spike or some type of special fifth, fifth fret capo um, to stay in the game with it, because it's really hard to play Cripple Creek using those open strings. If you got to fret everything on there. So the goal with the capo, uh, both for the regular capo and the fifth string capo, is to keep everything open string friendly. <coughs> okay, hopefully that helps you get some practice in and let me know if you got any questions. <laughs>